Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about design, design patterns. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how many design patterns do you actually use in your daily job? Ooh. This is going to be really tricky because it's hard for me to... Because I mean some things you are using even though you don't know that you're using them. Uh, I had, I actually remember, I had this, it's an old video where uh, someone asked me about what, uh, is, our, is functional programming uh, useful for daily work or something like that. And I basically say that knowing about a monad, a monad extract, uh, monads are completely pointless for the vast majority of software developers. And a subscriber very accurately points out and say, well, if you work in JavaScript, well, you're technically using a monad if you're using promises. And I go, yes, you are correct, but I will argue that there is a difference between uh, using a design pattern without understanding it and using it as cr in creating it yourself or like very intentionally using it for um, for a specific purpose. It, I mean, if, uh, and I actually wrote back and I said, if I said, uh, uh, can you give me a good example of a functor in say JavaScript? The vast majority of developers will not know what I'm talking about, and that's uh, that's kind of the difference. I'm uh, I argue that some uh, if you design the design pattern yourself, that's one thing. If you're simply consuming it, I mean, if you're using a hash map, technically you're using a data structure, but you wouldn't necessarily know how to implement a hash map yourself. So that's the distinction. So if we're just going to stick with things that I consciously do things that I myself am like writing the code to do this thing. I think that the most common would be the factory pattern. Now the way I define the factory pattern is basically that you have a need to instantiate a something something. You have a you have some type of interface and you need to create a specific instance of that interface and then you give a function some type of specification and usually underneath there's a switch statement or something like that. Oh, yeah, I need this thing. Okay, instantiate this thing and give me back an instance of whatever object I'm dealing with. I mean, even in the same thing goes for if I'm working in, say, Frontend and React and so forth, there are many cases where I have components where, depending on some property, I know that, okay, I have all these permutations, they are usually very specific, and I can't abstract them away because the data is fundamentally different. That is something that is really tough. Uh, it feels it feels ugly many times, but the and it's not something that a lot of developers like to do, but in some cases you simply don't have the ability to create a clean interface because the thing that you're dealing with is specific. An example of that would be, let's say that you you want to get, gra gather shipping information. The problem with shipping information is that there are some things like, an, say, in some cases at the very least, how an address is structured that is always going to be the same. But you have other things that might be very specific depending on the product that you're selling. If you're going to sell, say, electricity to someone, you need a certain set of information. And if you're going to sell books, you need another set of information. And you always have the, the... I have still to this day never been able to find a definitive answer to this. And I am on the hunt. I have been prowling the internet for years to uh, to, to find an answer to this question and it's either because I can't formulate it or because nobody really knows how to do how to do it well and that is to make the decision between having one concrete specific model for each permutation or something very something where you you're very specific about the thing that you want or a loose model that can potentially contain everything. If you deal with, say, optionals and so forth, if you create, let's say for the sake of argument, that you create an order model. Well, you can do two, th two things here. If, because as I was saying, if you have one type of product that needs very specific information, such as, say, electricity, they need street numbers and like and meter types and like all of this sort of stuff. And then you have someone who is selling books and they need book information. Well, sure, you can abstract. So, like, some of this is going to be common and you can create some type of abstract hired thing. And then you might have some generic property or something like that. That's that's absolutely possible. But at some point you get to this question, uh, 
you, because if you create something like an interface on top of the things that are specific, you're gonna that, then you're going the direct the one direction, the one that I usually favor when I have a very specific sort of problem or or a specificity problem, and that is to just create a factory. That's basically what you do. You need to pattern match or like conditionally check which data model you're dealing with because you get an interface and underneath you know that there could be many concrete implementations of this interface. And now whenever you want to. You, you, you as long as you can move on the interface that's the best thing because most of this if the if you do everything right most of the system will just care about the interface but in some cases you actually need to know what is under the interface and now you have to create a switch statement or a factory or something similar in order to uh, to break that out that's one way of dealing with it the other way of dealing with it is that everything is optional that you have all the properties that could be possibly on a order, depending regardless of if it is a a order for electricity or books or cars or whatever, right? And it's all generic and it's all uh, it's all optional. And now you move the problem from the model to the surrounding system because now all your surrounding logic needs to know okay how do I convert this super generic model into the concrete thing that I want how do I as an example how can I trust that if I'm sending out an order for electricity that the number for the house and the meter is going to be there uh, because I now need to make sure that all the logic that has created that the logic that created this model has done so correctly and in my experience usually the way to go about that is to do the other thing to just accept the fact that there are permutations because that way you can centralize the knowledge of how to create that model into one location because if you go the other way and you have a very loose model you have a lot of risk that if you because every time you change the logic in the system every time somebody new comes in and tries to create this order or this model for you it becomes very dangerous for you because you can't really trust that they did so correctly unless you have a factory because if you have a factory you can create a single way like there's just one single entry point that you can where you can instantiate this very generic order and then you can actually create a signature so that it's actually always a given. You simply inject the right parameters. And you give it the label, like usually a label saying that I want to create a electricity order or I want to create a a uh, book order, and then you put in the properties that are necessary to create that thing. And in underneath, the the uh, the factory knows exactly how to create this model, and you will get to back this very super generic model. But since you know that this is the only place in the system where you to the instantiation you created and we are assuming now of course immutability because we're all immutable if you can assume these things then you can usually trust that you will always have the values that you want and you can always convert that generic model to a more specific transient type so on average the factory pattern is definitely the thing that I use the most in some very specific occasions uh, we you might use something like a uh, a pub sub thing or a singleton, a singleton, but for the most part, uh, when you're dealing with web, uh, web enterprise work and so forth, and a lot of uh, very specific domain knowledge, the factory pattern is uh, it is a go-to for uh, for for me and for most of my coworkers. So what I want you to take away from this is that at least for me, the most common patterns that I deal with, hands down, is going to be the factory pattern, uh, and it's simply because the way that, like you want everything to be able to be under an interface but in many cases you always have a situation where you can't really abstract everything because the the data that you need to store on the model is very specific to one case and so you you're left with the the, the choice and i still don't have a very good definitive answer to this choice should you create one specific model that tries to, tries to reflect the needs of each requirement or should you create a very generic one that can fit all of the requirements and then just have logic that knows how to extract the information that you need when you actually need it. Uh, I go back and forth with these. I can't really give you a straight answer to it. It's if, And if you have one and you know someone who has found a genius solution to this, please let me know because I really need an answer to this question. Apart from that, 
things such as a pub sub and so forth are on occasion and I mean sure technically I'm using monads if I'm using promises and finally singleton patterns at some point but most of the time uh, the, the factory pattern is the most the thing that I use most consciously have a great day